So VX Rail um, started, oh boy, I think it was February 6, 16th, um, 2016. So we're coming up or actually just past five years now, now that I think about it. Um, and VX Rail has really um, taken off and gone beyond our expectations. And what is it? Uh, it's our hyper-converged uh, product offering. Hyper-converged meaning storage, compute, network, and hypervisor all in one box. So if you see right in front of you there, uh, we have a VX Rail node that is a PowerEdge server. And then some of kind of our uh, numbers that we have grown to here. So we're coming up on 11,000 customers. Uh, you know, we're a, a $5 billion runway company, 37% annual growth rate, and something which is crazy to me, like 150,000, 146,000 nodes deployed in the world of VX Rail. So VX Rail uh, really is our answer, not just for you know, VDI, which has been a kind of a, a common thought or use case for uh, hyperconverged infrastructure, but we're seeing it everywhere. Uh, we see it at the core data center. We're using VX Rail at customers for SAP HANA because of the you know, massive amounts of uh, memory that we can put in one box, AI and machine learning. Um, we have VX Rail deployed in all sorts of use cases, and it's just been a phenomenal product for us. So what makes VxRail special? Um, you know, because there are there are a number of hyperconverged products out there today, um, but VxRail is really special for one major reason. VxRail is without question the premier hyperconverged appliance for VMware. Um, prior to my product management role, I was in a, a systems engineer role, and when I would talk to our customers, uh, the the number one thing that I could tell our customers was, if you know how to use VMware, you already know how to use VxRail. So we look at VxRail being like a premier uh, deployment option for VX or, uh, VMware software. We're seeing all the, the usual suspects, vSAN, vCenter, vRealize, vSphere, and you don't need any other additional control plane to deploy or manage your VMs. What you're using is vCenter. So inside of vCenter, um, we use the VxRail Manager plugin. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Um, but that VxRail Manager plugin is really how we steer the ship. From there, we have the same level of you know, data protection, um, phone home options, everything you've come to expect from a premier uh, storage array. We also have that built into VxRail. So when you get VxRail, you're getting the best of um, Dell technologies and you're getting the best of VMware technologies as well. I know I'm talking pretty quick. If we do have questions, please feel free. Um, inside of VxRail, from a hardware perspective, now <laughs> it's funny for me because, like I said, I've been part of this um, institution for um, the the duration of VxRail, and it's just hilarious because when we started, we launched with six processors and two memory options. That was it. I mean, there was maybe one disk option. I think we had maybe a big disk, maybe a small disk, but our uh, customization from a hardware perspective was few and far between. Now we have so many different processors and memory options. It's something something like 15 million different combinations of hardware that we can include in a VxRail node. Um, so we don't even list them anymore. I mean, basically uh, when we look at these things, uh, it is the hardware is a PowerEdge server and everything you can get with a PowerEdge server. Some of the additional things that we do um, inside of VxRail to make it scale for uh, the enterprise space is we have things like APIs. Um, we build VxRail on automation. So uh, one of our last releases for VxRail um, that we utilize in the VCF on VxRail product is an ability to stand up clusters based on APIs. So instead of needing ultimate hands-on touch all the time, uh, we're building API integration into VxRail for our bigger enterprise customers. The other things that we include in VxRail, and it is the kind of the software um, that we include in, inside VxRail that makes it special, um, is uh, VxRail Manager. Now, when I say, oh, you know, you've got all this VMware software, you already know how to use VxRail, and now you're saying, Sam, here's a VxRail Manager product, what the heck? Our VxRail Manager is built directly into vCenter. So you're not using another control plane, you're not using something else. It's right inside of uh, vCenter. 
with that VxRail Manager product, what we do uh, is we do all of our life cycle. So on VxRail, all that hardware that I just talked about from your network interfaces to your uh, fiber channel HBAs, if you have external storage configured to your BIOS and your firmware, down to the disk level firmware, excuse me, all of that is managed through our lifecycle management through VxRail Manager. Oh, excuse me. So you have a continuously validated state. Um, it, we're taking the guesswork out of what BIOS should I use? What firmware should I use? How do I know what the right driver is? We do all of that work uh, with our engineering teams behind the scenes and we, re we release them as bundle updates. So you know that, hey, if I need, let's say, uh, you know, vSphere 7.0 U2 um, just came out, I need vSphere 7.0 U2. What firmware do I need to be on for my, you know, Mellanox card? Hey, great, VxRail has already done that work for you. So through our VxRail Manager product, we find bundles on the internet, download them to the, the system and deploy uh, those bundles across the, the hardware that I just talked about. We're taking the guesswork and taking that busy work out of um, running your hardware. So to a degree, um, that's what I call the, the keeping the lights on work or the 70% the of your time spent doing that busy work, that's what VxRail can do for you. The other cool thing um, that we do, and because we're a big company um, and because VMware is part of our company, uh, one of our, our family members is we have a single point of contact. So if you have a failure on your VxRail system, whether it's um, you know a dim fails or a disk blows up, or there's some kind of uh, issue with vCenter, you know, these things happen. Um, if you do have a failure, whether it's hardware or software, you're making one phone call. And the cool thing about that too, is that because we are a big company, we have things like PowerMax that enterprise customers have been utilizing for a long time. Um, you're making one phone call, you're calling into Dell. So across all of our different pieces of software, um, you're making one phone call for support. And that is, that is an enormous benefit for our customers, especially when we look at um, VCF. I'm going to jump back for one second because one thing I, I want to make sure that I, I talk about um, is with, with VxRail, um, one of the, the cool things that we can do is for your organization or for whatever you know, customer organization, um, we have the ability to deploy different suites of licensing. So uh, you have your choice of you know, vSAN, advanced standard enterprise dependent on the workload. You know, for instance, maybe you don't need flash for the workload you're gonna put on VxRail. Maybe you're using your VxRail for uh, video surveillance and you need that constant video recording. You know, those things write sequentially. Hey, what's great for that sequential writing disk. So as you record to that, uh, that video to your disk, you don't need flash. So uh, for that, you can use, you know, vSAN standard. Um, Moving on, maybe you have a different need of uh, vSphere. Maybe you need enterprise, maybe you need DRS, maybe you don't. We can do different versions of vSphere with VxRail. Regardless, you're getting VxRail Manager and the full stack of lifecycle management. We also have our cover point for virtual machines, um, licenses that come with each node of VxRail that we sell. Our RP4VM is very similar to the, you know, the recover point product sold by EMC for a long time. It's a, um, a great way of maintaining business continuity and a great way of taking snapshots and maintaining business and writing those updates to your long-term storage, for instance. We can also use vSphere replication so that if a VxRail node or cluster goes down, uh, you can always pick it back up at a secondary site. One of the other cool benefits here that, I'm, uh, that I haven't talked about is stretch clustering. So VxRail can run in a you know, metro distance stretch cluster. Um, and with that, uh, we can ensure site uh, resiliency and site uh, redundancy. So if a tornado comes through or a meteor hits, small meteor <laughs> hits the planet and takes out your data center, um, VxRail can pick up right where it left off on the other side. 